Lord, I ask that you would take me out of self. Allow your Holy Spirit to minister in me and through me, God, to your people. Grant us all ears to hear, hearts to receive, and spirit to respond. And when it's all said and done, God, may you be glorified in us and through us. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving, amen, amen, and amen. So we are 11 days into a new year. 11 glorious days. 11 days that God is with us every day. And in the 11 days that have gone by, including this day, well, this 11 days still here with us, we have heard about so many human stories unfolding. So many stories that tug at our hearts, stories that grieve our spirit, stories that could weigh us down in our faith, stories that prompt the mind to ask, why God? And we know that As we continue into this year, we will continue to have human stories that are uplifting and encouraging, stories that will make us laugh and stories that will remind us of, you know, more joyous times. But how are we to go through this year when the human stories are not joyous? when they do not seem hopeful, when they test our faith, when they depress our souls. How are we to deal when those stories unfold in our nation, in the nations across the globe, and even in our own personal lives? I believe this text that is so familiar, you know, we often quote the, 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 the verses, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We can quote that. But do we understand what is really happening and how we can draw strength from these verses to help us to deal with the seasons of life? that will not always be joyous, will not always be uplifting, the seasons that will test our faith to the deepest level. And in this passage, Isaiah, in this particular chapter, chapter 40, 40, he is seeking to encourage his fellow brothers and sisters The backdrop for this this text is that the people of Judah in the southern tribe, they were taken into exile by by the Babylonians. And they were there for years and years. And they began to wonder, did God forget about them? They began to have thoughts Is God seeing what they are going through? Is God seeing their suffering? Is God seeing their hurt? Does God care about them? They they needed to be uplifted, to be reminded that God truly is a faithful God. They needed to be reminded that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And sometimes when we as Christians are living and walking through this journey of life, sometimes we ourselves, if we want to to, to admit that, we ourselves are challenged when certain circumstances unfold in our lives, I will confess that sometimes I 
have to deal with the doubts and the fears and the uncertainties of certain circumstances in my life. And sometimes I have the thoughts, uh, God, where are you in all of this? Uh, But the good news is that those thoughts will come. But how we deal with those thoughts when they surface on our mind and how long we hold on to those thoughts that are threatening to weigh us down will make the big difference between how we move forward on this life with God. So so, so God knew the condition of his people's hearts. God had promised that God would take care of the Hebrew people. After all, God chose them for God's purposes to be a light to the other nations in the world. But what happens when you receive a promise from God and you are excited about it and it seems like God is delaying, God is taking a long time to work this out? What do we do? Isaiah helped his people to understand. He was the prophet for his people in that time when things really seemed dark and when it seemed as if God had forgotten them. He reminded them, he says, have you not heard? Have you not Known, In other words, what God would say to us, don't you remember your scriptures? Don't you remember all that I had done for you? Don't you remember to the people, you know, to Isaiah's people, don't you remember how I, God, delivered you, your ancestors, when you were in bondage under Egypt? Don't you remember how I gave you a covenant to help you to, to, to live a life, a holy life with me. And God may be saying to us today, have you not heard? Do you not know that when you had difficulties in your life before, didn't I show you how I'm with you and how I'm going to carry you through every step of the way? Haven't you learned that in your difficulties, in your failures, there are opportunities for you to grow in faith with me. Have you not known? Have you not heard that your God is an everlasting God? God is faithful. God is faithful long before God created the heavens and the earth. God existed long before the first words in Genesis that says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God existed way before we could even begin to understand God. God is present tense. God is faithful. God is able to meet you right where you are in your life circumstances and God is able to strengthen you and encourage you and uplift you and to teach you and to set you on the continuous journey into eternity. So when Isaiah told them that he was helping them to remember what all of the promises that God had given them. He was calling them to remember how God had demonstrated God's faithfulness to them and to their ancestors. And if God did it then, God can still do it again in the season that they are in. And then he goes on to tell them after. He says, those who wait upon the Lord those who wait on God shall renew their strength and and I had to spend some time with that what does it mean to wait on the Lord what does it look like 
to wait on God when it seems as if everything around you is falling apart. It's not what you would like it to be. How do you wait upon the Lord? So in my research time, I came across this beautiful story on the internet. And it didn't give an author, but the story just kind of jumped at me and I thought this might be a good illustration to help us to understand what it means to wait upon the Lord. So it's about a story about a young boy named Raphael and his sister Maria. They lived in a, a small town and every morning before they left to go to school, the mother would call out to Raphael, Raphael, take care of your sister. And he will just quickly respond, I will, mama. I promise I will. And they will go off to school. And one particular day, in this little town in which they lived, in the school that they attended, a tornado struck in that little town. And the school was hit. And the school building collapsed in different parts. And thanks be unto God, Raphael was able to, you know, to come out of that wreckage without any hurt. And after he realized that he was safe, he looked for his sister, Maria. And he, he tried to get to the area where her classroom was located. And immediately he saw that her classroom, the walls of her classroom had collapsed. And he didn't hear any sound. He didn't see any bodies. He did not see his sister, nor did he see any of her classmates. And spontaneously, Raphael, he ran to where the classroom would have been. And he started taking out stone after stone, trying to move it. And while he's doing it, he's praying to God. And then after a while, as the rescuers came and they saw him, some of the rescuers came to his aid and started to help him remove the debris and everything from that area. But after a while, the rescuers looked to him and said, Son, this is hopeless. Nobody could survive this. Nobody is alive under all of this debris. But Raphael didn't listen to them. Raphael continued to talk to God and continued to pray and continued to move stone after stone after stone. He was exhausted. But in all his work, he was able to make a little headway and there was a little crack. So he kept on moving and he kept on pulling while everybody else left him by himself because there were other needs to attend to. And then he came to this big boulder and he looked at it and he said to himself, I don't know if I can do this. He tried to move the boulder and it only moved a little inch. And then he was so exhausted that he sat down by that boulder and he started to talk to God and he said, so what now, God? What do I do? And as he sat there, he heard a little voice speaking to his heart and mind that says, listen. So what Raphael did was that he put his ear by the little crack and he held his breath and he said to God, I'm listening, God. And after maybe what seems like, you know, a millisecond, he heard a little faint voice back there. And that gave him hope. 
And that gave him encouragement. That he started to call to the rescuers, come over here, come over here. There are people alive in there. And as the rescuers came, and they too heard the little faint voice, they started to now move and move all the debris as fast as they could that they were able to make a bigger opening so that the children in there could come out. And the children started to come out one after another. And the last student to come out was Raphael's sister, Maria. She was bruised and she was scared. But when she saw her brother, she ran into his arms. And this is what she said to him. She told him, I knew you would come. I told them not to be afraid. And when I read that story, I said, wow. This is what it means to wait upon the Lord. When life is difficult, when it seems like things are hopeless, when other people are telling you there is no hope for your situation, when other people abandon you, what you do is that you go to God. You go to your creator. You cry out to God. You keep on trusting in God. You keep on believing that God is able to make a way out of no way. You keep on saying to God, I need your help, God. I need a way through this situation. God, I am trusting in you. To wait upon the Lord is to put your full trust in God. To wait upon the God is to depend on God like your life depended upon it. To wait upon the Lord is not to give up on God when situations are not working out the way you expect them to work out. Uh, to wait upon the Lord is to stand on the promises of God in his word. Uh, is to be drawn closer to God and to hear God says to you, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. To stand on the promises of God is to know that even though today is looking like it's dull and dreary, but tomorrow could be a brighter day. To wait upon the Lord is to know that if you trust the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength, uh, God will show you the way through. Standing on the promises of God. And in order for us to stand on the promises of God, we have to know the promises of God in God's word. We have to look to God and say, God, help me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. So then Isaiah said to the people, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I like the way he said that. He didn't say, God will renew your strength, you know. He says, you have to wait upon the Lord. You have to do all these things. You have to put your trust. You have to put your faith. You have to put all of that into God. And when you do that, you become renewed. You become strengthened in God. And then he used this beautiful analogy of eagle's wings. So I, of course, curious as I am, you know, I was like, why did, he, why did he use this analogy of eagle's wings? He says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not quit. And I said, why eagle's wings? You know, we, we, we know about eagles. We know that they are majestic. We know that they are the bird that command the sky. We know that they go high up. Even some cases, uh, people have seen uh, eagles as high up as airplanes all the way up there in the sky. We know all about that. We watch them and we say they are so beautiful. They are so powerful. They are so majestic uh, when we see them soaring in the sky. 
But I learned something again about eagle's wings. I understand that when a, a baby eagle is born, of course the, the wings are big and heavy for their body. But they, but, but they have a survival mechanism within them. God gave them a survival mechanism within them. They have to learn how to soar from where they are up into the sky without using too much energy. They have to learn how to discern the wind, there's, there's a term, a phrase that they use, they call it the thermal wind. They have to wait for uh, a thermal wind, which is a very big gust of wind that would come into the atmosphere, and they have to wait for that wind so that when they fly off from where they are, the wind goes under them, and the wind allows their wings to stay open up. And very rarely do they flap their wings, you know, so they can soar, not using, you know, their own energy, but using the energy of the wind under them to carry them high up into the sky. So when Isaiah is saying, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they will soar with wings like eagle. He's saying to us, if we trust in God if we put our faith to action then we always refer to the Holy Spirit as wind knowing that the Holy Spirit is God's spirit but if we put our faith into action then the Holy Spirit like the eagles win when we choose to walk forward into life and when the difficulties you know, arise in our lives, the Holy Spirit will be the wind under us. And the Holy Spirit will allow us to endure through. The Holy Spirit will allow us to mature spiritually in our relationship with God. The Holy Spirit will allow us to be drawn closer to God so that we begin to understand what the scripture says that we need to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. God will give us spiritual strength to endure through all of the doubts, all of the fears, all of the sickness, all of the grief and the hurt and the pain, because that's who God is. We have Emmanuel, God with us. So as we go through this year, God is calling us to a closer walk with God. But God is saying to us, we got to walk this in faith. We got to live this thing depending upon God, the Holy Spirit, depending upon the word of God, depending upon all of the promises that God has given unto all of God's creation. And God says, when you feel like it's getting way out of control, you just come to me. And you just cry out to me. And then watch and see how my spirit will help you to move higher and higher in Christ Jesus. So this is how we move through this year. We move through with the assurance, with the confidence uh, that things will come into our lives. But we already have the victory. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who gives us strength. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask God or think because God knows us very well. God knows our rising up, our lying down. He knows the challenges that will come into our life. God knows what we are going to encounter before this day comes to an end. And God is calling us in faith to trust 
more in this year because we will continue to see the stories unfolding that will tug at the human soul that will make us wonder what is going on. And that even challenge our faith to say, are you really here, God? But then we can say, I'm standing. I am standing in Christ Jesus and I will not be moved. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the promises that you have given us and we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for each person here this morning. I thank you for even those who are not here. By the power of your Holy Spirit, God, draw them closer to you. Draw them closer to each other and draw them, God, in your mission to the world. 